Hello again, everybody. Welcome to a new screencast lecture. Today's topic is acceleration. Now, I've had some uh, fighter pilots come into my classroom and talk to my class, and I talked to them about this. And one of the things that they described is if they're under a lot of G-forces, that they start getting what's called tunnel vision. Like you see here, you see, hey, this is a normal way to look. Here's this cow you're looking at it. But as your, uh, what, what's going to happen is your field of vision starts to shrink and you get what's called tunnel vision. You might be able to see this, uh, the cow kind of more like this. If you're experiencing that, that's a sign that, hey, you're about ready to pass out. you got a problem. You need to do something to fix that issue. So pilots and astronauts have been trained for high G-forces. What they try to do is they need to try to keep blood up in their brain because if you don't get enough blood in your brain, you pass out. That's why your field of vision starts to get get uh, lower. You're not getting enough blood. You're not getting enough few, uh, oxygen to your brain. And astronauts and pilots both need to train themselves to be able to withstand high G forces or low, you know, low G forces in the case of astronauts. So floating around, weightlessness, training for that. Uh, sometimes that's called zero G. There's a movie that was made several years ago. It was called The Powell 13 with Tom Hanks in it. Really good movie. Um, it's not something that I show in class just because it's it would take several class periods. Occasionally, maybe what we'll do it like in a study hall or lunch or things like that. It's a really good movie. You might want to check it out. Um, it's uh, about the Apollo 13, obviously, mission that was on a trip to the moon. Now, one of the cool things about it is there's a lot of clips in there where the astronauts are floating around. It looks like they're floating around in space. How did they do that? It feels amazing. It's, it's one of the weirdest things I've ever felt in my life. Completely indescribable. I love it. Well, it wasn't really CGI. It wasn't a, a trick of or anything like that with uh, computers. But what it was is they actually had an airplane like this, and they um, decked out the inside of the airplane to make it look like the Apollo capsule. And what they do is they take that airplane, and they go up, 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 and then they dive real fast. And as you dive real fast, what happens is your body experiences... Uh, negative G's and you can actually start floating around for a little bit and this this airplane here this is the one for NASA training it's uh, nicknamed a vomit comet you might be able to explain uh, guess why because as your as the airplanes going up and down your stomach's going up and down too and it makes you feel nauseous and possibly throw up here's a uh, here's a clip to take a look at what it would be like to be on the vomit comet there's one way on Earth that you can reproduce the weightlessness that only a handful of people have ever experienced in space, and that's in this plane. With the engines off, this is where about 30 seconds of zero gravity occurs. The men on board call it going over the hump. And then on into another maneuver that you would never expect this enormous plane to take. A pull out from a near vertical dive close to the speed of sound. The zero gravity flights operate from Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. It's to this airfield and this unique aeroplane that every astronaut has to come to accumulate vital seconds of experience in zero gravity and to learn how to move all over again. A medical examination to make sure your heart can take the strain lasts two full days. 
idea what's going to happen now. And all I can do is describe my feelings as we go through that. At the moment, the speed is building up. We're at this point in the dive, and fairly soon we're going to start to pull up. I, can, I have no idea what it's going to be like, so don't expect me to be too coherent. Listen to the engines, and here we go. And there's 1G2. And it's pulling down on me. I can hardly talk. I can feel my face going down. And I don't know if I'm talking clearly, but pretty soon we'll go up over the top. And when we do, I'm supposed to float. And, and I'm going. I'm going. It's fantastic. It's unbelievable. I, it's the most extraordinary feeling. I can, I can't really control myself. All the dust is flying with me. I'm up. I can't control myself at all. You should see the crew that are filming me, what they're up to. This is fantastic. Look at this. I mean, it is indescribable. And now we're back down again as he pulls out. One of the things that every astronaut says about weightlessness is that it's the most comfortable mattress in the world. So, if what they say is true, we leave you just with this last thought. Good night. There's actually even now... Uh... Uh, companies that will you could pay to do this to another way astronauts and pilots can train to withstand really high g-forces of acceleration and turning is what's called a centrifuge now this thing here it just spins around really 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 fast if you've ever taken a bucket of water and you swung it around your head the uh, water stays in the bucket even though the bucket's upside down it is the same general idea let's take a look uh, look at a clip and see what it's like uh, with a centrifuge Let's train for this. How do they deal with these uh, high G forces? What do they do? What are some things that they can do? Well, um, one of the things you can see, like in this video, you'll, you're going to see him doing uh, breathing. And he's going to make sure that he actually does breathe. That's one of the things that's really important because as you're straining under this, you might actually forget to breathe. I remember back uh, when I was in school, when you know, during, during weight training, one of the things that my uh, coach would tell me would be when you push up, when you push the bar, always remember to exhale. So, and then that way you remember to breathe because sometimes when you're struggling, you might be like, you know, holding your breath and pushing. And so if you don't breathe, you're not going to get oxygen, you can pass out. Another thing that they could do is use a uh, high-tech G-suit. Um, so what's happening is you have these pants here, and they actually will squeeze your body. They'll put extra pressure on your body to try to force blood up to your brain because you don't really need it in your legs and your feet and things like that. That's not that important. So you need to get it up to your heart. You need to get it up to your brain. Competing in one of the most physical and mentally demanding motorsports in the world, the 15 pilots of the Red Bull Air Race not only have to challenge each other, but they must also battle against the invisible pressure of G-Force. We work on blood pressure. You know, you need blood pressure in all of your bits, your head included. If you lose that blood pressure, then, you know, you'll lose peripheral vision. 
you know, the next stage of that is you might see stars, you'll, and you'll just basically see a tunnel, you'll get tunnel vision, you then see grey, and you still hear things, and then the next stage is black, and then you're unconscious. The pressure of G-force occurs in various parts of the air race course, the chicane, quadro, and the half cuban. But in a never-ending quest to find ways to further improve safety, the Red Bull Air Race pilots have taken part in a series of pioneering programs to explore whether the high G-forces could be partially neutralized through the use of a new high-tech G-race suit. With two years of intensive testing behind them, Red Bull Air Race's G race suit is now being used in all competition by all pilots. It is history in the making. It has four channels of, uh, of water that run down the suit. And uh, basically the, the concept is when I'm pulling G, the fluid rapidly travels down these channels and then it then pulls against the, the, uh, the fabric which then compresses against my legs. The movement of that fluid is faster than the movement of my blood, so it stops, it, it basically takes up any spare room in my legs and stops blood from pooling in my legs. I'm definitely not as fatigued when I'm wearing the suit, which means that I'm having to work less hard to pull G. What this means, this suit means, is instead of going around the quadrant going <laughs> and grunting away like man trying to keep conscious, I can actually not do it to the same extent. And then I have more capacity um, to actually fly the airplane and hopefully fly a more accurate line. Here you see this guy, he's using the techniques um, that we've talked a little bit about. One of the ways I, I want to describe this is like you got to flex your, your body muscles and you want to try to force the blood up into your head. You might see that I kind of turned a little bit red there. So you're forcing the blood up into your head to so keep yourself from passing out.
selfish. Hold your air. Very decelerating. Continue the straining. Okay, relax your breathing. Keep your muscles tight. Okay, try to trap the air under the clutters by just using the word hook without a K. There you go. One second and again. Hook. Turn in. Don't forget to exhale. All right, doing fine. We are decelerating for the last time. Okay, now squeeze. you learned a lot that was acceleration acceleration is pretty neat stuff i think it's pretty cool again it's one of those things where you can feel it happening so acceleration is all about like amusement parks and uh speed and and thrilling rides things like that so if you're into that kind of thing acceleration's for you uh we'll check you out next time when we talk about calculation calculating acceleration and graphing acceleration see ya